He was the man that I told you about at the beginning of the show. Went and graduated from Divin Yale Divinity School. He was a musician, a pretty, pretty good musician. One of his songs was recorded by Bette Midler on one of the most popular uh, platinum albums uh, of the, the movie The Rose that, that he had written. And, and then, and then I read it, I'm reading his book. And it's a decent book. It's, it's something that'll give you some almost experience in sailing and certainly a little more wisdom and understanding as to who this man is. He's sitting next to me now. His name is Tony Johnson. The name of the book is The Captain and Mr. Schrode. I think we've got a picture of that. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Tony, hi, man. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, man. <coughs> God, what, what a great, great job. It's like 400 and some pages. I, uh, I'm, I'm just t really taken by it. I, I, you know, you're, you, this is not what you were going to do as a young man. You didn't plan on being a sailor. You grew, you grew up down in San, San Diego, they call it. Terrible place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Your friends will love that down there, won't they? Uh, and uh, you know, you went, then you went out to school at college on the East Coast, and there was no sailing involved. And yet you do something most women or men now and in the past couldn't possibly dream of. Can you explain how this sort of came about, man? I'm not sure I can. Um. <laughs> Great. It's good to see you. Take this, care. I mean, I, I, I somehow uh, fell into sailing, and, and I, I met this uh, buddy of mine, Terry Schrode. Who, oh, Terry, yes. Very fine guy, salt of the earth. And uh, we kept, uh, I don't know if we dared each other uh, to do things, but, but uh, one thing wasn't good enough, so we had, it led to something else, like drugs. And... Pretty soon we were thinking of bigger and bigger adventures, and the only thing that really satisfied the bill of being a huge adventure is going all the way around. So we said we'd give it a whirl. So tell me, how long did it take to sort of once you decided to get everything together, to get your boat, which is quite a boat, right? I mean, it's really thought of as a sleek, a real sailor, a real, a real mover. It was in its day and some of the races in Southern California, even here, you used to take it out to Farallons occasionally, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, it took <coughs> us about five years. I, I actually total up the hours. I think uh, we spent maybe 5,000 man hours just getting ready. There's planning, you know, there's <laughs> charting the whole thing out, uh, going through the boat from stem to stern. That's the term you actually go through every screw and nut and uh, fixture on the whole boat so that you know what, uh, if something falls apart, you kind of know how to put it back together. Didn't have lots of uh, things that are taken for granted, like what did, did it not have, Tony? Did it have a sink? Did it have a refrigerator? Did it have, yeah. yeah, sink and refrigerator. Not a refrigerator, we had an ice box. We didn't actually oh. have, uh, a lot of boats have, I mean, a lot of the boats, nowadays have tv sets and all oh, and uh, stuff yeah yeah and heaters and and air conditioners and uh we didn't have anything like that or a water maker uh so uh it was kind of bare bones but on the other hand i mean how comfortable you are you going to be out there anyway yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in the middle of the exactly. ocean so. i mean how many yeah you know, <laughs> how many places do you need to lay your head at night it got us around about, it floats yeah. that's the main thing the uh, then uh, then the food uh, was what kind of food were you eating well, none of us, neither of us were very good, <coughs> very good cooks. <coughs> and so, uh, well, plus the fact we didn't have refrigeration. So after a week or so, you're on, uh, you're on your own just canned food and stuff like that. But okay. something I didn't realize when I went out there was I thought canned food, I can deal with that anymore. But, but you might get to some island in the South Pacific and they have a store there and they have cans of food to eat. But they might only have three things. Spam would be one of them. Yes, yeah. Spam is big in the South Pacific, and then fish. You get any fish? Beets. Then? Well, we did. We did fish. Okay. You can't always fish. Some islands are going to be um, kind of protective of their own waters because they're coral reefs. They like for their own people. Yeah, some yeah. places, and some places you can fish. But yeah, we fish too. But a, a lot of times we just kind of endured it until we got <laughs> into harbor, and then we hit the restaurants and the bars. This is a, 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 a picture of uh, the Maverick, which she is called. 
uh, yeah, big old sail, and she had a motor in her. What was the engine size on the motor? Uh, it's, um, you know, I Four, think 40 two, horse. Okay. That's uh, Bora Bora, by the way. That, Bora Bora, oh uh, yeah. That is Maverick um, anchored there around the backside of Bora Bora. What a hell of a... It almost looks like a volcano hollowed out. Is that yeah, what they're it is? all volcanic islands. I yeah. mean, coral reefs, what they are is uh, uh, you have a volcano that comes up from the bottom of the ocean, and then it's so heavy that it depresses the bottom of the ocean and it sinks. And as it sinks, the coral grows up at the same time, the, the same rate that the uh, volcano is sinking and forms a lagoon around the island. Aye. Darwin figured that out, actually. And uh, that's what you have at Bora Bora. You're, you, you seem to me to be a, a gentleman that's sort of highly, or maybe not that highly, knowledgeable about, uh, I don't know, Darwin, about uh, Drake, Odysseus, Columbus, Plato, Socrates, bullfighting in Spain, Mediterranean geology, Junior Walker and the All-Stars. I mean, you, there's, all these things come up in your book. I mean, you didn't major in any of these people in college. It's just some knowledge that you had found uh, throughout your life experience in, uh, in, in, in sailing and, and other things, right? Well, <clears throat> you got to entertain yourself. And, uh, uh, you know, you have a lot of time to read out there on the boat. But also, these are things that throughout my life <coughs> interested me. Uh, cool. And so... When you go to these uh, these exotic places, everything that that has informed your life up until that point uh, is uh, is utilized in in kind of perceiving what you're perceiving. So your your the texture of what you're seeing is de is developed in your own uh, past experiences. So that has to go into the book. You're not just looking at a palm tree. I mean you're you're experiencing it from whatever you bring to the table, so. Gotcha. You experienced a lot of different feelings. One, I, I have absolutely no idea how you, what, what did you do for music? Because you were a, sort of a drummer, but, and you're out there and it's here, and I mean, there's nobody around, it's just, just at nighttime or daytime. Did you play anything? Tapes, or what are they called, CDs? Or? Well, we had tapes then, you know. Yeah. Uh, the CDs were just coming in. This was 10 years ago, and CDs were just... Yeah. Uh, so I didn't... Uh, we didn't have CDs on board. We did have tapes. And, yeah, we'd play... Usually when the sun went uh, started to go down, we'd, uh, we'd get dinner out and play some uh, tapes. Our favorite tape was actually uh, Van Morrison and the Chieftains. That, th that's one of his uh, greatest records. But, yeah, we'd, we had... A bunch of music on board. But we had Dave Hayes down here one time. Remember he played bass. Oh yeah, I know bass for that sure. kid. For that yeah, kid. yeah, yeah. So I'm also saying, you know, you've traveled thirty thousand miles. You left March the seventeenth of two thousand one. So everybody here that's all freaked out and funny and and knows dates knows that in September uh came uh what we tend to relate to as 9 11. Yeah. and here you are in your boat some of your family people are telling you hey man come on back here no you decided to continue and you decided to fly the american flag were there any issues about that well it just you know it wasn't like an in-your-face thing. Uh, we weren't being super patriotic or anything, but we, we heard about 9-11 when we were in the Coral Sea, and, and Coral Sea is just uh, this side of Australia. So then you go to Australia, and right after that, you're going to enter the Muslim world. So you're going to go to An Indonesia, uh, which is a Muslim country, and then uh, Phuket's not Muslim, but then you go on to... Uh, Phuket is spelled P-H-U-K-E-T? Yes. Okay. And, and uh, Thailand. I was wondering how to spell what Thailand, and then you go on to uh, uh, the Maldives are Muslim. Uh, we went to Oman, yes. that's Muslim, and then you're going to go to Egypt and up the Red Sea and through the pirate zone. So the, we were just about to enter the biggest, uh, the, the, the center of the Muslim world. And, uh, but here's what I thought. We, we heard about 9-11. Everybody was freaked out about it. And my, and my insurance company canceled my insurance. They said, you can't go in that area. Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, even though we already weren't insured for piracy, terrorism, or war, 
So I guess they thought we were going to set our boat on fire or something yes, uh, because we were so freaked yes. out. But in yeah. any case, uh, uh, <coughs> we we just decided it was too lame to claim. We had, some people were claiming they were from Canada, and some people turned around because we heard there were a lot of rumors. You know, you remember the time? It was very everybody was freaked out. Oh, it was and an amazing time. You know, in this people country, told especially. us that Muslims are just going to yeah. murder you, and yeah. I, I thought. That doesn't seem right that all of a sudden overnight everybody's going to become a homicidal maniac, mm -hmm. you know, just because they're Muslim. That doesn't sound right to me. And in fact, nobody said boo to us. Everybody was as sweet as could be. Yeah. The only problems that we had were the kind of problems that everybody's always had traveling, you know, maybe money and logistics and whatever. Right. But uh, 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 the Muslims uh, were nothing but sweet. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the deal. You know, if you if you have bought into the idea. What you know what I mean? You're being told, uh, then you're then you're in. You're you're bought in, but it just absolutely makes perfect sense that there are those folks that uh, you know when you're one on one, sharing conversation, food, whatever, uh, you know, it, because you have a different sort of uh, issue going in your belief, that, that's not going to get in the way. No, as a matter of fact, you know there were there were times when I we felt comfortable enough with uh, people we were talking to that we'd talk politics and maybe they'd be critical of America maybe yeah, not yeah. but they wouldn't be any more harsh or hostile than you would be talking to your neighbor I mean they were just saying well you know I we don't think that was right or I don't think that was right but you could get in the same conversation with somebody down the street so no we never had any problems with uh, that's wonderful any any issues with pirates or any of that stuff well we had Somalia a <laughs> In when, the, the typical cruiser thing to do is when you go through the Gulf of Aden, you uh, group up with a bunch of other people and y you form a little flotilla and go through there. But I had always theorized that the best protection would be really big wind and, and heavy uh, seas, which is what we got. And so the, 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 if you're trying to get on a boat from another boat and the seas are 12 feet um, tough. You're going to kill huh? yourself doing yeah, it. So, yeah. so we were protected by nature, really. Uh, but we did have one little incident off of Sri Lanka, which isn't the middle of the pirate zone, but these guys came out and uh, they weren't, there's all kinds of pirates, and these weren't really, prof <laughs> they weren't really <laughs> professional ones. Yeah. They didn't have AK-47s, but they did have knives, and there was more of them than us, and they wanted to get on board. And which, by the way, I should have mentioned, uh, uh, your crew consisted of you, and Mr. Schroeder. This, mm, just uh, us too, yep. Just yeah, us too. Yeah, yeah, right. And so we're just <coughs> motoring along. There's no wind, and these guys yeah. come up, uh, and they want to get on board. And it's clear they're, they're not getting on board just to, you know, share some cupcakes with yeah, us. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, they want, they want something. Yeah. And Terry comes out of the, uh, he's down below, and he comes up, and he starts talking to him as though he's both the dumbest and the sweetest guy in the world. And he just, th there's something about his presence that doesn't allow for even the, c the conception of evil. It's, it's like that isn't part of the world that he expresses, the, the way he expresses himself doesn't allow for that. And he just says, well, can I get on your boat? Or, you know, can, is that fun? What are you guys doing there? You know, do you have candy? I mean, he... <laughs> he just came across as the dumbest guy, but the sweetest uh, guy in the world. And, you yeah. know, it was so effective that it was just disarming to them. They, they couldn't keep up this kind of macho, hard guy uh, attitude. And they just eventually peeled off and gave up. Cool. Well, that was, must have been a relief. And, and wow. Yeah, it was a relief. I, he, must have, he must have gotten a, a nice citation or a commendation you know, from, I, I from should. the captain on that one. Yeah, I should have huh? made some kind of plaque for him, but I didn't. Uh, things that were out in the sea that were uh, special that happened, there were many, but there was one where the sea turned white. Uh, what, what was that about? That is really weird. There's a, a, I, a, I just saw another version of it on TV. If you go to the ocean, any ocean in the world, at night, and you have a boat out there and you, and you travel through the water, you'll see these little sparkly things. And yes. they're bioluminescent uh, dinoflagellates is what they're called. They're little plankton guys. And, and if they get disturbed, they light up. And there's different theories about why they light up. But um, the uh, sailors of old used to call them sea stars. And 
Uh, we think what happened, actually nobody knows, uh, I, I found this, I did some research when I got back. Marine biologists only theorize about what is really going on, but what they think is it's a bloom, just like you've heard of the red tide. Yes. It's yeah. like that, it's a bloom of these guys where there's billions and billions and billions of them covering the ocean. And they're all dimly lit so that the ocean just kind of faintly glows in the middle of the night. And so I came out, uh, we, it was the middle of the night, and this was in the um, uh, Arabian Sea, and I, I, uh, I looked at the ocean, and from horizon to horizon, it was white. God, it would have blown me away. It was very strange. It was very, and people, <clears throat> uh, like I say, they, they just theorize on what is going on. It's not, it's not aliens, but. Folks, I've been talking with Tony Johnson, uh, author of The Captain and Mr. Schrode, a book I would really, really recommend. I've got about 30 seconds, uh, Tony. When you, you the, the trip ended after about two and a half years, over 30,000 miles. 812 days later, you, you got into San Diego. We've got to make it brief, uh, too, if you don't mind. Uh, and you were on the dock, and, and you were looking around. You were so happy, and you were saying hello to everybody. And after about a half hour, what happened? Well, I, I was so giddy, and I was saying hi to everybody that I, I realized people thought I was psychotic. And, yeah. Uh, Scared and so that was scaring people. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that just hits home to me because <laughs> I know I noticed just when just living in this area, you've, if you're too happy, some people are just they're just there's something wrong. Yeah, huh? yeah. Gotcha. I was just happy yeah. to be back. And Tony Johnson, alive. We're, we're pleased that you you came here. We could at least have done an hour or more on this book, but I'm so pleased we had a little taste of well, it. Well, thanks very much. Uh, for the having book me, is Bruce. available was on Amazon and at most bookstores here yes. in the area. You keep up the good stuff, man, and I, I'd recommend this to anybody. And keep up your, your great sort of life that you're leading. Thank you for bringing down your wife. Well, thanks so yeah, much man. for having me. Oh, uh, you're quite welcome. Man. Yeah, Tony, Tony Johnson. Once again, the captain, the captain and Mr. Schrode. Inter uh, 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 a dry sense of humor. Uh, wonderful way of looking at things. Uh, wax philosophical he does in, in many areas really really cool and uh,